So thank you. Actually, I will uh, do my talk and I mean, take the, the code I developed for a massively parallel image-based simulation for heterogeneous materials, mainly on mechanical behavior. This, I developed it uh, at CEA with uh, various internship, PhD and postdocs. So <clears throat> the, my talk, for the very first part will be the, just the context and I will spend a lot of time on the, the Amitech standard, the, the mechanical, uh, for the mechanical behavior, which is available for the community. And I will take a few slides to, for the ongoing works on the extension of the, the code. So the context is the numerical simulation of uh, heterogeneous material. So the idea is that we want to perform simulation on a, a unit cell, heterogeneous unit cells, in order to obtain the microscopic behavior, mechanical behavior, as well as full feed local quantities, and in order to compare, to experiment, not only the microscopic, but also the local quantities. So this is very classical. Uh, the heterogeneous materials can be, uh, for example, synthetic forms here, uh, concrete architectural material. I, uh, I work a lot on polycrystal also. We have also been working on CC composite, many heterogeneous materials. So now, uh, with what about the solvers to do this? The natural trends uh, for this simulation is to increase the spatial resolution, to increase the volume size, uh, to go towards more and more complex behavior loads. And with standard finite element codes, epic codes, we rapidly reach uh, computational limits, such as uh, time and memory. Uh, and parallelly, uh, in 1998, uh, FFT-based solvers have been proposed. They are very well suited for image-based <coughs> simulation. Uh, you don't need a, a complex meshing procedure. Uh, for this specific uh, application of unit cells, they prove to be very efficient as compared to standard FE codes. And moreover, they are very well suited for a parallel implementation, which allows really to push back the, the limits that we have mentioned here. And uh, they are also well suited for possible extension to not only mechanics, but working uh, with other, other uh, physics. So now the, the method, uh, so the problem that we have to solve in mechanics is the following. First is the equilibrium. Then you have the behavior law. Here we see here with the, is the stiffness tensor here in linear case is heterogeneous over the, the unit cell. And here you apply an average strain to the, the unit cell. Then you add periodic condition and uh, compatibility. So the idea is that we will split. So this, this problem is rather complex to solve. To, to simplify it, we will, try to split, uh, we will split the behavior in the, the first part with the homogeneous behavior, C0 in blue. And so we add C0 epsilon and we remove C0 epsilon. And this C minus C0 epsilon is divided as the polarization. So the problem now is rewritten. We have just split the behavior. So it's, let, as, it's as, it is as complicated as before. And just for a moment, uh, we will assume the, this as a known quantity, this field as a known quantity. So now we've got an auxiliary problem here that is defined with only an homogeneous behavior. All the heterogeneity is in tow that for the moment is, is uh, assumed. And then this problem on homogeneous behavior can be solved according to, uh, thanks to the Green operator for homogeneous medium, which is a convolution product in real space and a simple product in Fourier space. So this is known. So we can obtain the solution of this problem is given by this. So now, as we have this solution of strain, we can reintroduce the strain in the definition of the polarization that we have forgotten here in this problem. So we introduce this and we define a simple fixed point algorithm on the so-called Lippmann-Schwinger equation. So you've, you've got here a, a fixed point algorithm. 
So we have developed uh, the Amitek code based on this this uh, this, more, this first algorithm. We have improved it also. Okay. And uh, concerning the code, the we have a stable branch that is available on a GitHub that we put that is free for a research and education license. Right. And we have also the branch, the master branch that is still in progress to develop uh, essentially extension towards uh, couplings, uh, couplings with code with other physics. And so. so now I will focus on uh, the the Amitech standard that is available that is available and the, the way. So first, the specificity is a, it has a quite versatile uh, user interface. So to run the code, you have to run this MVI run because it's a parallel implementation, the name of the code. And then you, you give different files. The two first files are two image, 3D images, which uh, define the microstructure description where you locate the different materials in the unit cells. And then you give uh, different XML files where you assign for material, you say, okay, this material, this region will have, uh, will be elastic isotropy, this second one will be plasticity and so on. You will also have different possibility uh, to, for the loading and the output and uh, definition of the algorithm parameters. The outputs will be VTK files, so complete uh, fields, as well as uh, text files where there are different average and standard, uh, standard deviations within different uh, materials, within different zones of materials, and so on. So there's a... Okay, if you want to learn it, you can, there is a user's guide and the, and the training session that are available on the website. Uh, one specificity of the code is that is interesting is that you can write your own behavior function following to the UMAP <laughs> format. If you are familiar with it, it's gonna, it is compatible with Abacus. So once you have written your behavior function in a, in a, a function file, for example, you can compile it and store it in a dynamic libraries, and then uh, you can say in the in the XML file, you can say, okay, for material two, this behavior will be the my own my own behavior that you can find in the uh, dynamic library that I have built here, and that's a way to to introduce your externally your external behavior. Okay, of course you have a small list of uh, standard behavior which has native dynamic tag. For example, if it doesn't give the name of the library. And just the name of the of the behavior law, you will be using this. Okay, one word about as we have told about the, the fixed point algorithm. We have not said too much about the gamma zero operator, so the Dijkstra green operator. Here it is based on a finite difference. Uh, it is based on finite differences with the strain and the stress defined at the centers of the voxels and the displacement and divergence of sigma the stress defined at the corner of the, the voxels. This uh, is strictly equivalent to uh, the use of linear finite element with reduced integration. So uh, yes, I won't deal with the technical techniques, just uh, one slide to show that on the left, We've got a result with a uh, Amitech. On the right, a result with a real finite element code that is a purely finite element code, and we've got exactly the same result as we are as we are using linear finite element with reduced integration. Okay, so this is a way to say that we've got we solve an FE method with an FFT based solver. So, Okay, and um, an additional point is that we, are, we don't use only the, the fixed point algorithm that I, I show. We, add, we have added uh, convergence acceleration techniques. So here at each iteration, we, we store the solution, the strain, epsilon k, and the residual, epsilon k plus one minus epsilon k. And we store four different couples of uh, four couples during the different iteration. And every three iteration, we propose something new based on this knowledge. So it's no, 
it's more efficient than the simple uh, fixed point algorithm. So the efficiency actually is very, it's much more important. And the other interesting point is that for nonlinear behavior, you don't need to uh, define and to implement the tangent behavior for nonlinear problems. Okay, another specificity is the, the possibility to use composite voxels. So I will show you a, an, an example of the, the interest of this. Uh, here it's a syntactic form, for example. You have a polymer matrix and hollow glass sphere. So in red, it's clearly it's a void. And there is a thin layer of glass. This is a hollow glass uh, composite. And if you want, if you want to evaluate the normal stress uh, at the glass polymer interface, and if you do nothing special, if you just assign the value of the center where uh, is the where it is in the geometry, you have you will have really poor results even if you increase the resolution here, the, the number here is the number of voxels that you have in the, in the thickness of the glass. So it's not so good to have, a, there is lots of uh, oscillations. In that case, if you, if you introduce voxel composites, so in that case, you, you know that there is an interface that goes through the voxels and the behavior of the voxels will, uh, Will depend on the volume fractions of the different box, of the different phases, but also you can also make it depend on the normal of the, the interface, and you get obviously much more uh, better results. So this is uh, you can okay, this is available for linear and nonlinear behavior. Also. Uh, a last point is uh, the possibility to uh, to relax. A periodic boundary condition. For example, here, this is a, a tube, composite tube that was in the PhD of uh, Young. And uh, we can assign new properties in the, around the tube and within the tube, which simulate the uh, uh, stress free boundary condition. Okay. This is the second example where we have uh, introduced internal pressure in the tube, uh, new properties here. We find back the the good uh, analytical research. Uh, just uh, very quickly, now I, I have introduced recently the way to introduce not only an average strain, but also a strain gradient, which can be applied and useful for beam or, or plates or the application. Now dealing with HPC, uh, if we look at the the algorithm. So the definition of the polarization here is uh, purely local in space. We you apply the behavior law. So this is perfect for a distributed memory. Uh, the, the green operator, sorry, the green operator is also local in Fourier space. So this is perfectly uh, parallel in uh, memory. And finally, the only thing that is less uh, less local, that is not local, which are the FFT and the inverse FFT, which are yeah, well, a bit less well suited for uh, distributed memory. So the decomposition that we use is not this one, it's uh, this one, okay? This is a pencil, a 2D pencil decomposition of the unit cell. So this is interesting because we can use more process than with the simple, the sum, the slab decomposition, the one d decomposition. So the, the the problem with FF problem, yes. The inconvenient with FFT is that three D FFT are a succession of one D FFT. So if you perform in one D, if the pencil is in this direction, there is no problem. But now in the other direction, you will have to transfer to uh, transpose, sorry, uh, the data to be able to, to perform the FFT in the second direction and the same for the third direction. So all this work, all this stuff is done with the 2D comp library uh, and involve uh, MPI all to all communication. So in terms of scalability at the end, uh, I, I propose a weak scalability. So the problem size increases with the, the number of nodes increases 
with the program size. In that case, uh, if the perfect stability, the elapsed time should be constant. So here it depends on the, the behavior load. So for light behavior, I will say, for example, elasticity, this is very, very, very efficient. Then uh, we spent a lot of time in FFT and we are not exactly uh, purely uh, perfect, but it's not so, so horrible. Uh, on the contrary, for heavy behavior, I would say with every nonlinear behavior, you will spend a lot of time in behavior, which is perfectly parallel. And the FFT is just a small part of the total time. So this is, you can really, you have a perfectly perfect, perfectly scalable application in that. Case. Okay, now, but just a few applications. So we have seen that it was useful uh, to use composite voxel for synthetic forms. I don't think like it here. We have used uh, with Yangshen in the PhD of Yangshen. He has performed the uh, Institute on Site Test on uh, six, six tubes. He detected the small cracks and parallelly, he has uh, run 3D simulation on these tubes in order to obtain the stress concentration and compare the location of the cracks to the, lo to the location of the stress concentration. So this was a 7 billion boxes for future simulations. Uh, another application that I'm working on is the, the simulation of intact granular plastic strain localization in polycrystal. Uh, but here you have quite complex behavior and you need to have a very fine resolution. So for that purpose, it's really important to have a massively parallel. Uh, another colleague of mine who is working with, uh, with Amit Jake. So I've not, he's a simple user of the code. I've not uh, worked with him. So he has been working on the coalescence of voids in single and polycrystals. So these are very interesting simulation because you have Finite contrast, finite strain, crystal plasticity. This is quite uh, heavy. And uh, he was happy with that. Uh, he also studied uh, stresses at grain boundaries to analyze intragranular cracking. So he, his input was 3D EBSD. So you have the 3D geometry of the polycrystal. He ran uh, amitate simulation with crystal plasticity in order to obtain the strain field and to obtain. The stresses at grain boundaries compared uh, this to the observation of cracks, whether it was or not. Another uh, original application and recent was a, a colleague of, at Meteo France who uh, used Amitech to, uh, to run a simulation on snow. So, this is a CT scan of snow. He has identified the different uh, grains of snow, and in each grain, we have crystal plasticity. So this is also a, a rather demanding uh, application. So final, the few extensions. So this was, this is just before, uh, this is what you have when you download the code. Now I will just one slide on the different extensions of the ongoing works that I do with various uh, collaborations uh, with Young Chen. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he has been working uh, on damage phase field, and we are still working on that purpose. With a postdoc, I'm working on multi scale amitech, so I can perform a multi scale with a large, a coarse, coarse grain and a smaller scale, and we can make interaction between the two simulations. Uh, with other colleagues at uh, VTT, oh, sorry, we are and at the uh, University of Lorraine. We have performed a phase field simulation and solidification or solid phase conformations. And uh, okay, and Piporus uh, flow with Yangshen once again. <laughs> uh, and also DD coupling with a uh, well, coupling with dislocation dynamics. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Okay, there is a lot of application, and I'm trying to stabilize this, uh, this way to incorporate various uh, extensions. And when it will be stabilized, I will put it on the, on the web That's for access to all. Okay, as a conclusion, uh, okay, many 
effectively just solve a of growing interest in using the community. To my opinion, Amitech is well positioned uh, because of its versatile user interface and parallel implementation, and it allows for uh, original extensions. So for me, it was interesting because it's a support for various collaboration, and it can be used for uh, by different teams in, the, in France and abroad. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, elsewhere, if you want to test. Mm -hmm.